Hello, is that better? Ah, oh, hopefully you can hear me now. Sorry about that. You can tell I don't do this that often. <laughs> there we are. Hopefully you can hear me create design. Apologies. Hopefully I'm pressing the right buttons now. So welcome. Welcome. Hope we're doing okay. Um, Simon, he'll be joining us shortly, no doubt. Um, so yeah. So how was everyone? Has anyone managed to get any petrol in their part of the world? It's the first question I've got for people. We're not having a lot of luck here in uh, in East London. Got the uh, the popcorn on the go here. So the thing is, you've got to stock up. When you're doing a live stream, you've got to stock up. You have to go and get your nibbles ready. Okay. So, yeah. So, Daily Life Outdoors. Ben, you have managed to get petrol. Or is that a yes, you can hear me? <laughs> um, so last night I, I went out in the car around East London and I I trawled the petrol stations and I couldn't get a drop, which was a, a, a little bit frustrating. So I've got a wild camp plan this weekend. And um, if I don't get petrol, I'm going to have to cancel it and go for a plan B and get on a London bus or... A, the underground train or something um so so yeah it's a bit frustrating all this petrol business isn't it a little bit frustrating right uh, hey ho oh i think i might have a message from simon so if simon's joining us ah so i've just had a, a message from simon outdoors he's just getting a whiskey so he's, he's uh yeah, getting his, getting his whiskey, getting his priorities right, and he'll be joining us shortly. Um, you might remember Simon tried to do this about two weeks ago. He tried to set up a live stream with me on his live stream, and uh, he wasn't as successful as he wanted to be, and he couldn't get me on there. So we've had a little bit of a play around with this, and hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, it will work and we'll get him to appear. So keep everything cross, guys. Who else we got here? Uh, so we've got Daily Life Outdoors, Create Design, welcome. Uh, Morris Louise Eagle, welcome. And welcome, Grace. Graham, haven't filled, haven't filled cup for a week. Do you mean you haven't filled the car for a week? Oh, and, oh, Louise, you've managed to get petrol. Oh, well, I, might, I'm, I might need to, I might need to borrow some. It's really, really frustrating. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll we'll be sorted. We'll be sorted. So I've got this wild camp planned. Um, it's looking quite rainy. It's not far from London, so it could be quite good. But it's a bit difficult for me to get to on the train. So, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, I'll get there. Um, so we've had a few questions in uh in on the in the community the youtube community so also just waiting for simon uh hello camps and coffee hello jason so i need to come to newcastle don't i i need to, i need to come to newcastle to get some petrol basically dan clb welcome good to see you so maybe it's a london thing maybe we just we just haven't got any petrol in london but in the north it's okay i thought it was pretty bad everywhere I'm hoping the army are going to turn up. Boris is going to send the army over to Bow, where I live, and um, we're going to get some some petrol because I I really need it to be able to go camping at the weekend. Um, but hey, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, and I probably need a probably need a plan B. So Morris Louise says our. Our Daimler takes 21 gallons and we live in the Lake District. Johnny Boy 476, welcome. Good to see you. We've got 20 watching. I'm quite impressed. I'm quite impressed. So yeah, I was um I was just mentioning about some questions that came in in advance of tonight, people that couldn't make it and so on. Um so I had a question in uh from day hughes hikes who is said to me have i ever wild camped in snowdonia and if not do i have any plans to visit 
So the last time I went to Snowdonia, I think when it was when I was a child and my family took me on a couple of grim holidays there. And we stayed in a rather rainy log cabin somewhere, I think in Trosfinid. I probably pronounced that incorrectly, sorry. Um, so yeah, that was my last time in Snowdonia. So the answer is I've never camped there. I've, st I've stayed, you know, in a little hut, but I've never camped there. I'd love to. There's lots of videos, lots of really, really good videos out there, isn't there, of people doing Snowdonia camps and mountain explorations, Ash Outdoors, Joss, people like that. I'd, I'd like to do it. Um, it's just the, the time factor for me. It's just quite hard with my, with sort of work and, and family commitments. Um, so I work in education and then, I, and then I've got children and, and it's, yeah, it's not, it's not as easy for me to sort of um, go as far as, as, as some other people, some other YouTubers. Um, so I have to, that's why a lot of my camps tend to be in the Southeast of England, but I, I would like to, I've got quite a few things on my bucket list at some point. So they'll probably will happen. They probably will happen at some point. Um, Dan has said, let's have a go at clicking on these comments. Oh, there we go. Uh, Dan has said, have you been working out ready to carry your Lavoo? Uh, yeah, I probably do need to, don't I, Dan? I probably do need to do that, especially if it's going to rain on Saturday. And I've just checked, there's a 100% chance of rain, I think. So, yeah. I'll probably get my workout on Sunday morning, Dan, when I've rolled it up and I'm having to carry it out. So, um, but yeah, I've got that to look forward to. Mm -hmm. I? I did test it out, actually. I did test the Lavu out um, on a little semi-wild camp a week or two ago, um, just to try it out um, with the car nearby. And that was good. So it was my first ever experience of the Lavu. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what it's like in rain. I'm told it will season it, so you Lavu experts might be able to confirm that. But apparently, if, if it's not been used before, the Lavu, I'm told if I let 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 it get wet and dry, it'll kind of season it. So that's good, right? Who else we got in? Oh, Simon was about to appear, then he disappeared. Let's see if we can get him back. Uh, hello, uh, Karku. I pronounced that right. Welcome. I'm not glamping. Hello, sir. Welcome. Big Ears Bridge, good to see you. Um, so Camp Life Bushcraft, Dan, what size is it? It's a medium, size two. I did buy the size one for Military Mart and I tried it out and it was a bit of a snug fit. So I, um, I'm i 5'8 and it was still a little bit snug, especially if I'm raised up a little bit on the sleeping pad, head was slightly touching it. So a lot of people were saying, the medium wasn't much difference, but it, I noticed a bit of a difference for me. So I just I just sent it back, and then they, they gave me a medium. You can't get these size threes uh, for love nor money, but it's a medium. Rowdy, hi from Shropshire. How's Shropshire this evening, Rowdy? Right, I think we might have Simon. Let's see if we can get Simon in. Londoner outdoors. Simon. How are you doing, mate? You're right. <laughs> hey, I've pressed the right button. <laughs> <laughs> I pressed the right button. I was like, oh, Welcome. Man, tech thing. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good, good. It's Busy really week, good. but yeah. It's good Thanks to see for you. having me on. No, no, pleasure. Welcome, welcome. We've got... Uh, I was about to say we got 18 watching, and then it went down to 17 as soon as I looked at it. So um, because I joined, as you, as you joined, yeah, yeah, numbers, <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, just commented. Yeah. So I was just telling everyone, Simon, that the uh, this is a bit of a live stream 2.0 because about two weeks ago you we tried it the other way around, didn't we? Where you were yeah. hosting and I was guesting, and um, I didn't make it on, but you know. It happens. That's that's why that's what that's why we're having a two because mine didn't work first time around <laughs> because it was on my channel and I couldn't get the tech working. So yeah, but yeah, it's good. good, it's, good to it be seems on. to be working. I th yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed. It all seems to be okay at the moment. Um, so ju just so everyone knows, I Simon and I have never actually met in person, but we've communicated a lot on YouTube over the last two years. That's two years, probably about two years. And then 
we were hoping to meet for the first well we we've we tried a couple of times to do collaborations and we for whatever reason we we haven't managed to get there just yet and then we then we then we tried the live stream two weeks ago and that didn't happen and then we did an instagram video call afterwards didn't we and finally actually yeah. to each other so um so we've never actually and met that, in person, but yeah that that's the call we should have recorded probably because then we just spoke for about what half an hour and just about camping and yeah and, and youtube and stuff and yeah yeah that's probably what we wanted to get on but absolutely yeah. well, we were just talking about i don't know if you can you can kind of see comments popping up at the moment but um I, i've just bought a lavu a size two lavu and i haven't used it for any videos yet and i was just explaining that um, I'm planning to use it at the weekend if I can get out, but it's supposed to be rainy. So Dan at Camp Life Bushcraft was asking whether I'd worked out to be able to carry it because it's like, going to be so heavy and waterlogged when it gets wet. Um, but I haven't. But I, I tried it out about two weeks ago and I slept really well in it because they're so dark. And I'd like, I don't yeah. know about you, I like darkness. Can't sleep. Yeah, I, the same, same for me as well. I think that one of the first tents I had, the Berghaus Peak 3.1, um, it was really bright, like red on the outside, but inside, I think I think the Berghaus tents are still the same, but completely yeah. black inside, which was which was really good because it just meant yeah. yeah, complete blackout when you go to sleep. Um, yeah, 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 I don't know, I don't know about you, but it's um, I'm quite like sensitive to light and noise when it comes to to sleeping, so that was quite yeah. a, quite a nice feature. It's one of the disadvantages in the summer, isn't it, when you're in a bivy bag. Or, or you're out in a tarp and bivy and then you get the sunrise at 4 45 or something <laughs> it's kind of i don't know you kind of go with it we haven't got much choice you know but yeah you're suddenly ah, oh, i'm awake you can almost always guarantee like an early wake up kind of you when you're sleeping in a tent i find yeah yeah absolutely um right i'm i'm try i just remembered that if i click on comments they appear on the screen so mm -hmm. um Right, here's someone. So, 47, Fred47, thank you, welcome. I'm enjoying all the new wild camping YouTubers. The community is getting larger and producing some, some great videos. It does, I don't know about you, Simon, but over the last couple of years, it does seem to have, it's increased, hasn't it? The community has definitely grown. It's got crazy, hasn't it? And I was listening to uh, Paul Mesner did a live stream, I think, on Sunday. And he was saying the same thing about, yeah, just the amount of channels out there now are, there are just so many on there. And it, I think it, I think it's good. I think it, if anything, it can only sort of um, broadens people's awareness of like this hobby and only be good to have, to have that uh, um, exposure. Um, yeah. So I do, I do think it's good. I, th I think it, interestingly, he was saying and something I thought as well now, like the standard of videos as well. And like the photography and editing of some people who are just starting out is, is incredible. I mean, I, th I think I started my channel maybe two years ago and I've noticed like I'm just sort of blown over at the level people are at, you know, just just who have been around for sort of six months and are just, you know, you're editing really good photography and stuff. So it's I think the level has increased as well as the kind of the, the amount that like the volume of, of people as well. Yeah. And it's amazing what technology, I'm going to show my age a little bit, but what you can just get in the palm of your hands and and I remember <laughs> when I was a teenager and I had a Saturday job in a in a shop selling video cameras with cassettes. And then I was just looking at my iPhone and how powerful it is and the resolution you can just get on any smartphone these days. I mean, it's just bonkers, yeah. isn't it? Like what you can yeah. do, where people used to have cameras and do their sort of mm. like home movies on cameras this big and tapes mm. and, um, yeah. and, and all of that. So a question for you, Simon, but let me just put it there from Camps and Coffee. He's asking what, whisk what whiskey you're drinking, mate. Ah, oh, great question. So. I've, I've I decided something different. I think it's some leftover from Christmas, but I got a load of these. I don't know if you how well you can see, but kind of little, um, you know, the miniatures. Oh so yeah, this one's called Ben Bra Bracken. I've not I've not tried this brand before. I, I I've got some Glenfiddich up there, which is quite nice. But I'm just trying to get through these now. So yeah, just it tastes quite nice. It's quite smoky. Not tried it before, but I do quite like whiskey, just with a bit of ice or some water. I'm just gone on a you just going? got a I just got a boring old IPA from Tesco tonight. Nice. <laughs> I quite like those though. They can be quite nice. Just the yeah, yeah. They're not bad. They're quite refreshing. Not too strong. Yeah, good size. Good size for camping. Um, yeah. Right. So I'm just gonna just scroll in. Bear with me, mate. Bear with me. Um, right. No I'm gonna go back I need to, to hear yours. Some questions. Hmm. 
Right. So there was a uh, so there was a question that came in on the community this week uh, from Random Hato, I think it is. And the question for you, Simon, is are you planning any long distance walks or camps next year? So we've got anything in the pipeline, big stuff. Plan planning, I think people who know me will probably, probably agree. If you've seen my channel, planning's not my greatest strength, especially with this channel. But So I don't tend to plan that far ahead. But what I, I know I'd eventually like to do um, the um, Cape Wrath Trail, even before Mr. Hayes kind of put that one on the map. I, it was just one I saw. I think shortly before he did it, maybe six months before I realized it was a, a pretty huge, uh, like it would be a really big challenge. So I'd really like to do that. Probably um, if, I mean, I could potentially do it next year, but I think with that, it's such a big distance that it's, and I forget how long it is. It's well over 200 miles, isn't it? So I, yeah. I just getting the time off work would be a challenge. Um, yeah. But yeah, next month I'm, I'm doing the East Highland way. Um, around i think i've got a leave of about four days and then a weekend so and it's only it's, it's under 100 mile i think it's like 86 so i'll be doing that okay next month. um but yeah cape wrath would be the one that would be i think on my on my list but it's just getting the time yeah a bit of a challenge what about you ben do you reckon well i'm just saying someone's, i'd love it. the difficulty i've got is just kind of getting the time to escape mm. the southeast <laughs> yeah um, so I've got the, you know, I've got the vehicle to do it, but I was just saying that, you know, kind of work commitments and family commitments yeah. make it a bit of a challenge. So that someone asked me whether I can, whether I would camp in Snowdonia or whether I have, and I, I said I haven't, but I would like to. But it's just, yeah. the, it's just uh, having the the time to be able to do it and uh, childcare and stuff like that. So um, yeah, but I, but I hope it sort of encourages people that, you know, if you if you do have those kind of commitments like me, you, you can still do stuff. And so, yeah, yeah. Someone, someone was asking me, um, how far do I travel out of London to do the camps? And I'd say probably 70 miles, maybe, because I tend to do these sort of the home counties and, you know, home counties, yeah, up Suffolk. And yeah, and, it, and there's so much there. There is, there is, there is a lot there. And um, more than you think, right? I, I was pleasantly surprised about because the, in that, like the dream scenario is you live kind of somewhere up north near like Manchester or something. So you're just, you know near the peak yeah. district and near the lake district yeah. and but i think that's you know with us in in the south and in london it, it, i was surprised when i started out a couple of years ago how many places there are and you've we've spoke about surrey before in the hills and like, all the yeah. forest around there yeah i think i think there's plenty there's, there are definitely plenty of places like you know out hour away from sort of where yeah. we live in london i think I, I think that you know when i first started doing all of this i was i was just watching so many videos of Peak District and Lake District, yeah, and, Adonia, yeah. and, and no, no, no disrespect to any of those. I think they're really great and really inspiring. But I had to sort mm. of just, just remind myself there is a lot in our region. So mm -hmm. um, Camp Life Bushcraft is just saying, "Are you both southeast based?" And yes, yes, we are. I and and um, a so more east, I guess. But yeah, yeah. But, but I'm thinking southeast London, but he probably means yeah, yeah, yeah. like southeast uh, UK. <laughs> Hey, yeah southeast england um so but yeah i just found that there's there is you, you can have you know just as good little adventures micro adventures you know out in surrey and sussex there's some amazing places and they might not be high and craggy and uh snow caps um yeah but there's still some really good places and i think i think it's really important to kind of almost showcase your area and it's not I, I actually like watching youtubers that only camp in their area you know because it just gets me i can sort of learn about their where they're from and what mm. it's like um you know if we had videos of snowdonia all the time it'd be a bit dull wouldn't it yeah and it, yeah i agree and i yeah i completely agree about the because I, I guess when i set up my channel i kind of wanted i i had a vision of you know amazing views and all that stuff and i think as you get more into the hobby you realize actually <laughs> it's not practical to, you know, travel these distances. And it's, it, it feels very um, quite finite, I guess, like in the UK with, you know, you've got a couple of national parks that everyone goes to essentially, isn't it? Lake District and I mean, yeah. like Scotland and all that stuff. But like you were saying, it's, there are so many videos out there of, of Lake District, Peak District, and actually it, it's, it's a bit more probably interesting for a viewer or like for your own experience to be going somewhere different i guess um yeah we've got the benefit of that living where we do so i think yeah it can be really satisfying as well you know just suddenly mm. finding somewhere a bit random not far from home yeah it can be so yeah. 
rewarding, can't it? I mean, yeah, not, yeah, not, yeah. not rewarding going up, you know, to Scotland or something. But um, so just going back over the comments here. So, Lou, uh, Maurice Louise, so Louise is saying, have either of you, have either of you planned to do the C to C? Simon, you did do it, didn't you? I did it. Yeah, I did it in September yeah. of 2019. Um, somewhat kind of, I think I was about six months into the hobby, <laughs> but then like camping, I, I you know, so it's, it's quite new for me. Um, yeah. But yeah, it really enjoyed it. And I would say if you're planning on doing it, it's just, it's not like, so I did the West Highland Way last year and that was very signposted. You didn't really need a map, to be honest, although yeah. I did have, yeah, I, I got an app on my phone, but with the coast to coast, it is very, um, you have to be pretty focused on your map because it's not always signposted, uh, but it's really good. All right, awesome trail, and it's one. Yeah. It's it's pretty cool to say that you've walked like the width of the country. It's quite, and, and there are loads of obviously the Lake District, and the, 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 you go through the three national parks. Yeah. Um. So it's a really it's an awesome one to do. Yeah. I would I would love to do it actually. I, I yeah I really would like to do it. I quite enjoyed Ash Outdoors's um series mm. of, of videos that he did and um. Mm -hmm. I'd like to do the South Downs way as well. That's a hundred yeah. miles, um, and that's, again, that's not far from me, really. It's just more about the time, having that chunk of time to be able to that's it. Just to yeah. do it. And um, you know, I'd like yeah, ten, ten years earlier, I'd probably be able to just like ditch everything and just jump in the car and go. But um, yeah, I just, I just yeah, you just you just go with it and you just adapt it, don't you, to your lifestyle and what you're doing and yeah, yeah. Like, but you were there, weren't you, in your last video? You were at the, at yeah, the start yeah. Right at the, yeah. I tend to, I tend to sort of go to the South yeah. Downs and do something, then cut and then leave it, rather than stay on it and walk along it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's the South Downs again. Like always, see bits of it when you're camping, yeah, you, but yeah, in and around here. But yeah, um, right. I just check in the comments. Welcome, Hardy. Good to see you, mate. Hardy Tempest. And Hello, mate. Uh, Hello. Okay, just having a little look. So I think Camp Life, Camp Life Bush, Bushcraft. I'm reading off my phone because I'm in the I'm in the stream in StreamYard, but he was saying South yeah. Downs Way is on his radar and he might end up doing it in chunks. And I think that's that that can be a nice way to do it sometimes. Yeah. Is some of the longer distance ones is kind of you, yeah. you, know, you don't have to do it all in one i think a lot of people do that they kind of break it up yeah um, no i agree actually and that's that is definitely a way of doing it because i think otherwise you you never end up doing stuff um yeah it's, it's yeah. like and you still get to see it that way the thames path uh so before lockdown and everything happened i did about 30 30 miles of it and i i should go back and do more of it so that's a hundred that's that's 184 miles i think the thames path to the is sword. it that long? Yeah, because it's sort of twisty all the way up into. Yeah, yeah. Um, but again, that's something that's in London, and so that's you know I'm not far from central London, so that was really easy to mm -hmm. do. You know, so mm -hmm. but that's good. And uh, Day Tripper Richard from Day Tripper, he's 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 just done that one actually, and that's something that you can break up because it's got train stations along the way, so you can kind of yeah. get on, get on a tube station, get off, walk a bit of the river, and then get on a tube and come home. I think that actually gets, it just gets a bit harder the further you get out of London because you run out of the tube. Yeah. Right? You know, so. yeah, yeah. You're getting further away from home. But who was, I, think, um, I can't remember the guy's name, he did the Jubilee Way on, and he's, he does, he, he quite likes his kind of doing these longer distance walks but in quick time. Um, polar or something. I can't remember. But he, so he did um, the Jubilee Way. I think he did it. Like, like, I'm trying to think who that was actually. Yeah. Or something. Um, um, I'll find them on Instagram, but it, yeah, it was impressive. So there's, I think the Jubilee Loop, that Jubilee Way, I think it's called that. It does a big loop kind of round, yeah. sort of round central London, but you know, north and south of the, of the river, and it's like 50 something. There's miles, the, like, um, there's something. the Jubilee Way around London, isn't there? And there's also the Capital yeah. Ring that goes all the way around. Okay. I think there's that as well. So there's a few, there are a few routes. So we do, yeah. we do, uh, we do have trails in London, believe it or not. <laughs> um, yeah. Grey's out. Polar London is, is the one. Pol Polar London was his name. Barry. Oh, yeah, Barry from Polar London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So Graham Grey's Outdoors. Um, yeah, he 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 did the South Downs way, and he did it in four weekends. There we are. So that's oh, an wow. example of, of uh, breaking it up. Yeah. Uh, and that and he, great. It's worth checking out Graham's videos. He because he 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 serialized it and he showed you how he did it. Um, so that was quite inspiring, actually. That was pretty inspiring. I just subscribed to his channel actually very recently, um, um, if I'm not mistaken. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll check out his videos. Yeah, I'm, so I'm trying to get, I'm trying to subscribe to as many of the sort of newer ones as I can, just to yeah. See, like, keep, there's, see there's, so much there. there's so many, um, yeah. there's so many channels. It, mm. it the challenge is then, then, then having the time to watch everyone because there's so much great mm. content pinging up all the time, isn't there? Yeah, um, and it's just having the time to kind of to watch stuff. So I feel like my watch. Yeah. And my, my watch later list on YouTube just get longer and longer of all the things I'm saying. Yeah, what's it? Save, save, save. You know, and it, and it's sifting through what you like as well. I think because I, I, if I'm honest, I'm, not all of it is kind of I'll necessarily you know sort of be that interested in. But then there's yeah. some other really good stuff that I that I like that's yeah that I can kind of relate to. And I guess that's I guess we think about that as well when we create videos. But people have different tastes, and so some 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 you know I have a list of things I want to watch, and then others I'll probably, yeah. probably not. But. A question in from Cats Cats for Brecky. Cats for Brecky. Uh, welcome, Cats for Brecky. So Cats for Brecky says, my dad walked Land's End to John O'Groats, but had to do it in chunks. Wow. Uh, I get like it's quite, it's quite a long way, isn't it? That's fair enough. Not planned, but how it worked out, but how it worked out due to injury and also the farm lockdowns with the BSE crisis over a couple oh, of wow. Yeah. in the end. Wow. So it can yeah, be it can be done. Even I think with the, doing, even with the, chunking, doing it in chunks is the, it's kind of the way, isn't it? Um, mm, especially that distance. That's crazy. That, that's a really long distance, isn't it? Camps and coffee. Uh, talking local trips. I'm considering doing the Viking way or the Yorkshire Wolds way in the near future. Both these ways start quite close to where I live. So that's really good, isn't it? And I think, yeah, sometimes we don't always realise there are, there are little trails near to us, not far from us, and it can be quite... Definitely. Yeah, I, I saw a map on on uh, I think it was on Instagram. I think it was on um, step away from the screens. What's his name again? Uh, I can't remember his name now. Nobby. Um, Nobby, of course it is. Yeah. Yeah. So he, I think he posted a map up of like all the trails in the UK, and you know, like the coast to coast one, West Island Way, and all the pop South Downs Way. Yeah. And there are so many other ones, like lots around Wales and loads of kind of more discreet ones that I'd not yeah. really heard of before. But this one map just had all of them on it, and it was quite impressive. Because you realise how many there are and how many are close to you. So I, I've just done, taken out one of those yearly subscriptions to OS maps on the on the phone, okay. digital, and um, yeah, just geeking out on that really, zooming in, <laughs> you know. <Why> not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really um, but this. <laughs> But, but you just but you just suddenly discover little trails and things that are not going to be on Google Maps or Bing Maps, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, and that's that's really good. They're not always marked that well when you actually go and find them. But um, right, Hardy. Now is the rutting season. Any tips on not getting gored? Wow. <laughs> It's not, not, I don't know, not really having that problem in East London at the moment, Hardy. Really. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was one on there. That, what was it like? That, I can't remember. What it was that? It was like a deer that, like, um, basically was found in the city somewhere, and they sh they basically shot it. It was pretty sad, to be honest. Yeah, I saw that on the news they today. Found, did you see? Yeah. It? yeah. So they're, they're for, you know, and they obviously said, you know, we couldn't safely kind of because RSPCA were like, you should have sedated it, blah blah blah. But yeah, yeah. It was pretty yeah, brutal. Something about that. Um, you got straight. Uh, run faster, cats for brekkie says. Run faster, yeah. So I, I'm just going back up, just checking. Right, up. Yeah. Not missed anyone. Sorry. And uh, I'm just logging into YouTube as well, so I can actually see the live stream. Oh yeah, yeah. Because um, I can just see the streamyard stuff, which is fine. Um, right. I have got. A few, I got some other questions here that that came in the old post bag for you, Simon. Hold on a second. Um. I've got a couple of questions for you, Ben, as well. But oh, we there we are. Okay. Um, so, so there's a there's a uh, a subscriber on my channel called Snork Herder, and they mm -hmm. said, "For Simon, I've not heard of your channel until Ben mentioned it. <laughs> um, oh, what would you yeah. say is what would you say is the most interesting thing about your channel?" There's a question. <laughs> That's like one of those interview questions, isn't it? Where like, you know, yeah, so tell us what your strengths are. Yeah, yeah, all well, your strengths and weaknesses. <laughs> I'm the most interesting thing about my channel. Well, <laughs> but yeah. don't let that put you off. Yeah. Um, well, I guess I could start, I could say what my channel, I mean, it's, 
what I like to do on my channel is just I, I try and do some like interesting trips and stuff and keep it a bit varied and have some around London, but also do, you know, I've been to Scotland and some in the Peak District and Lake District, um, some in Wales and then, but do like gear reviews as well. So mm. um, if I've got a new tent and sometimes I'll get, I'm, I'm lucky because I've, I've been sent a couple of like bits of gear from suppliers in the past and or, or tents and mm. so I'll review those or if I bought a new tent myself, I'll review it. So I try and alternate between sort of technical gear reviews and a little bit more technical and then um the sort of yeah the, the trips as well and and yeah. sometimes the long distance walks as well which i'm sort of doing one a year of those at the moment as well yeah yeah so yeah and i don't know what other channels you, i don't know if anyone has you've it. Got some really good reviews on your channel i have to say yeah you've got some good you know you're quite thorough and mm. um and also i quite like it when you're when maybe things aren't working out the way that you're planning it to, you just keep it in the video. And I quite like that. You just, you just kind of keep it, keep it real. Like the mistakes. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think, I think sometimes if we, you know, and I've made that mistake before, you know, we try and make things too polished and then it, you know, it's not, it's not, yeah. real, it? it's no, it's not, yeah. if, you know, the things go wrong and, and people need to see that. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. And I, th I think it's, that's the challenge, isn't it? You, you're trying to, I think when I started YouTube, I was sort of probably not really being myself. A lot of the time I was probably being what I thought I should be by looking at other channels and things. Yeah. And I think over time you sort of more, I mean, I learned to be a bit more myself and yeah, that's what I, that's what I try and do a bit more in editing now is sort of just keep in, keep, keep that stuff in. And yeah, I think when I, again, when I started with the editing, it was just, I was trying to get it really perfect. And it's just, you just, you're just forever editing, aren't you? And sometimes it's quite funny mm -hmm. to, in in the, the the silly things that happen so yeah yeah and people like i people i mean um, you know if we put ourselves in the in the shoes of the viewers you know we like it when mm. things go wrong for people don't we yeah it, it's quite it's quite watchable you it's know? a bit of a bloodbath out there isn't it? like people just want to see misery i think one of my best most watched videos is me just you know it was actually for, i think you went to um there's a hill along the south downs way somewhere and yeah basically just suffering in a tent with really bad yeah. weather and got two hours of sleep and now, like people just seem to enjoy that kind of stuff because i guess it's probably a bit different to the norm isn't it like the storm lamps and stuff i remember a, a comment i got on a video once and someone said your misery was my evening's entertainment <laughs> <laughs> and so and people like it people like, you know, people like disaster yeah like disaster and you know wild camp fails that yeah happens. you know people want to click on wild camp failure because you had that video didn't you where were you where your tent your wild country tent got absolutely massacred yeah yeah that was in um where was that now that was in kent i think on, I mean, it um, bits, wasn't it it was really it was pretty yeah it was it, so i knew there was a storm coming and i was a bit probably a bit naive at the time and i and i um you know i thought the tent would be okay and i could sort of handle it it was one of those i was pretty close to my car i think it was a you know it was less than <laughs> hours walk to my car yeah um so i knew it was fine and then actually my tent probably it it may have survived it had i have just pegged it all out like 100 percent correctly and guide it all out and i didn't quite i don't think yeah and subsequently i think two of the guys like snapped and um yeah so it was like a 1 a.m abort which is the only time i've actually aborted it but my tent was sort of collapsing in on me so i couldn't really <laughs> You know, I could not about that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really stay there. But it was fine. It was like, you know, it was just like I knew, I sort of knew it was going to, you know, you know, it may not go according to plan and just sort of dealt with it and it wasn't too bad. I think the scary one I actually had was recently in um, when I went to the Brecon Beacons because I was a three hour walk from my car and I had the, the, the Fuel Raven tent. So I knew, and that's why I bought it after that, what that experience. I, I wanted something that was a lot safer. So I did, I think my concern was it was raining heavily, it was very windy. And I was at the top of Penny uh, Penny Fan, yeah. Um, sorry, um, Fanny Big actually, and yeah, just raining and, and and wind and so I moved. I was quite near the edge at the time. Moved away from the edge, and then I was sort of like, oh, I don't know. If, yeah, this is a bit dodgy because. And then I just thought, well, actually, in reality, I could probably walk back to my car. It would be raining and wet, and it wouldn't be ideal, but mm. you know, I could probably do it. Um, and then, like, come sort of two, three in the morning, it it calmed down and it was fine. But I'd say that's that's the only one I've sort of yeah. really been a bit concerned about. But what about you? Have you had any sort of... Jonathan, sorry, Jonathan from My 24 Adventure. Welcome, Jonathan. He's, oh, asked, yeah. he's asking you, Simon, was that Ivanhoe during yeah. Storm Tierra? Was that, was that the yeah, one? Yeah, that's the one. 
Yeah, and I think that was the. I think we had several storms in like the space of maybe six months or something. I think we did, didn't that we? One, uh, yeah. I think sometimes we just got to know when to say, okay, that's it's getting silly, yeah. and it's not all about you know YouTube videos. It's about safety and yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, got to be got to be safe because that's safe. the temptation, isn't it? You just keep pushing that stuff, and like I did Striding Edge week before last in. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but it leads up to sort of Helvellyn in the in the Lake District, mm. and it's quite it's just a bit of a knife edge. It's quite narrow. Yeah, and, it, and it's very popular, and the loads of people do it. But if if you were to do that in the, I think Dave from uh, Border Rambler was saying, um, he did it in like Jan. You know, he always goes out in like the worst weather. Like he'll just go out all, all year round, and he went, he did it in January, and it was like he said it was freezing, and someone else commented saying they they actually slipped off part of it, and and luckily I had a sunny day, but I can imagine. You know, if you're trying to push it a bit on YouTube and, and make an interesting video and you go up there in the winter or something, it's, yeah, it, it could be really, really I dangerous. watched that video of yours last night, actually, and it, yeah, it did look it looked pretty dicey and that was in decent weather, you know. Mm. So, yeah, mm. I can imagine if you if you get, you know, a bad weather system come over and low visibility, low visibility. Yeah. Suddenly that would be pretty horrifying, really. So. I thought you were going to say you watched it before you went to bed so you could get to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's that boring. Yeah. <laughs> So that leads me on to a question about first aid that's come in on the YouTube community. Uh, it was, it, for me, uh, you can answer it as well, Simon, but it says, uh, do, do, do we have any first aid skills? And uh, if and when you group camp, and do you plan on doing any training? Well, I carry a, for, if, if I answer for myself, I carry a first aid kit. Um, I haven't had any formal training, but it is something that I'm strongly considering doing. I have been for a while. Um, I thought about doing a, a pediatric first aid anyway because of my children and stuff like that. Um, but I just thought it'd be quite useful to it, not even even if you're not even necessarily in a group, but if you're on your own or you come across someone who's, who's had a problem and you need to help them. So makes sense, really, doesn't it? Especially yeah. Getting, we do a lot of solo stuff for us YouTubers, and and we, and we do take risks sometimes, don't we? I mean, even if we're just, you know, in the southeast of England, it can be, you know, it can be risky. And yeah, I think I think it's a hobby, like anything. At the end end of the day, like you, I'm not sure you'd take a first aid course, you know, for I don't know if you if you're into something else, surfing or something like you. So I don't think you yeah. necessarily need to, but I think equally you should be. You know, have a have a first aid kit as like a minimum, just so you can, you know, tourniquets yeah. and, and you know all that kind of stuff, um, just in case something does happen. The like the the emergency blankets and all that is always yeah. useful. Um, I've got a whistle. I carry the. I've never had to use it, but I, oh. I've, got, I've got the whistle. Um, quite useful. Mm -hmm. you know, can't get to the mobile phone or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, okay. You you mentioned you had some que you had so I've got loads of questions here but I think you you yeah. mentioned you had a one or two coming in from your channel yeah or just a couple well a couple from from me to you really Ben um, yeah, yeah what 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 would you say is if you do you have a piece of equipment or hiking gear or camping gear whatever that you couldn't go on a trip without that you kind of Ooh. you take it every time and you know out, probably outside of the big three or four or whatever it is a sleeping mat pad. Or, I mean, maybe that's one of yours that you, you have something you really like, like a sleeping pad, but um, is there any bit of kit that you really like or that you, you absolutely wouldn't go on a trip without? Uh, can I include tents in it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... The, Having just said, don't include it, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like that, uh, I mean, that is the main one of the main ones. Yeah, I mean, if, if, so uh, my, my, um, I've made quite a lot of videos of my Helm Compact One, my Wild Country Hell Compact One. Is that a good tent? It looks wicked, that, that it's tent. It's so good. I mean, I just, <laughs> I didn't think it was possible to love a tent, but I, really, <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, I'd be destroyed. Yeah. It, I, I, and I would buy it again. And I bought really? it, and I bought it when it first came out. And I, um, it was recommended to me by Hardy Tempest, who I think is still here. Yeah, he's got one, hasn't he? Oh, has he yeah. got two or a one? Has he's, he got a uh, he's got a couple of them, I think. And yeah, Hardy, Hardy had the first one, the original one, and then yeah, and then I kind of he was telling me about it and giving me some tips, and and uh, decided to take the plunge. And it it's just so easy to it's just so easy to put up, and and it's just solid, and it's like the TARDIS, Doctor Who's TARDIS. You kind of get in and there's plenty of room for me. Someone of my height, I, I, I find it all right. Um, I know you, I think you've got the Helm too, haven't you? 
Oh. I did have. I got. I, I sold it actually not not too long ago, but I had that sort of um, quite early in like my camping. Yeah. Sort of a uh, career, call it a career or hobby or whatever. But um, yeah, I thought I thought it was really good. Um, I, don't, I I I didn't have enough perspective at the time, I think, and since I've I've sort of been in a couple of different tents and owned a couple yeah. of different tents, and now so at the moment I've got the Jack Wolfskin Skyrocket Two, and I always bang on about it on my channel, but yeah. it's basically the Helm Two, but like way better. It's and, yeah. and until I actually got that, I didn't think it would be that would be possible because the Helm Two was it was a good tent, and it. it <laughs> The little cat. What's her name? What's his name? Um, this is Lily the cat. Oh, God. <laughs> be on the stream. Um, but yeah, but yeah, going back to your question, I think um, that's that's yeah, it's something I just I'm just really rely think so reliable. You know, if I had a choice of a shelter, that would be up there, number one. Yeah, yeah. And there's, there's other little bits and pieces that I my electrical things something you know like you know, like battery packs and head torches those sorts of things you know that are just like yeah they just work you know they just yeah. you know those sorts of things are just are just reliable you just know they're not gonna let you down in theory so how about, how about you on that one if you've got anything that has to, um, has to go on most world camps I just on that just on what you're saying about I, I sometimes think if you don't notice it like then it's a good bit of kit if that makes sense like you your head torch and stuff you just take for granted but mine's yeah yeah well, I've got like a decathlon one for the four class one which I think a lot of people have put now like the gold or whatever and black one yeah. yellow and black and that's been amazing it's it's not super powerful but it does it's got like a burst yeah. of like 400 lumens which I had on the other day in, in when I went to Lake District and it was awesome like just and it's because you don't notice it it never lets me down so it's like that's a good bit of really good bit of kit in my eyes and yeah if you, you know if it, unless it, until like a jacket leaks or a, you know something tears that shouldn't like you you kind of um you sort of take it for granted a little bit but I think those are the really good bits of kit that you keep taking out and rely on I quite like those deca um, those down jackets were quite good those decathlon down jackets as well I think decathlon it's got some brilliant mm -hmm. kit and I and I and I and I know um, Daily Life Outdoors, he's a big decathlon person. And I, and I think, you know, especially if you're starting out or you don't have a lot of mon money at your disposal, I think it's a good place to get stuff from. And Definitely. Um, I've got a Petzl uh, head torch and it's rechargeable. And I just love the fact it's rechargeable and and it's just it's just served me well. It's never let me down. And yeah, and I think I just take it for granted, like you're saying, you know, it's just kind of one of those things I you know, throw it in, but it's just so reliable. Um, there's, a few questions, there's a few other questions coming in. Yeah, so I, just, I, just, I just want to make sure I don't miss out yeah. on people. Um, so I'm going to go back up. What, 22 in the house as well? Good 22. Thanks for joining. Welcome, yeah. Um, camps and coffee again. When camping, do you prefer solo or with company? Oh, the million-dollar question. I like both, but seem to be more aware of my surroundings and noises when alone. Simon. You do you do most of your stuff solo, don't you? Really? I do. I don't have any friends. That's why. <laughs> no. I, I, a lot of my friends are sort of in Brighton, or, or yeah, my main friends really, who I went to school with and stuff, and that's where we grew up. So, so I've been on a trip with them, which I, I think I put a um, video on my channel, and they've been. We've been trying to get one um, together more recently, but a lot of my trips are sort of sort of solo. So I, I don't. It's quite hard for me to answer really because I don't. Yeah. I've not been on a huge amount of trips w w with other people, but it's something I, I want to do and something I should be doing um, more of, just because it's, I think, you know, just different experience, I think. Yeah. Um, what about you, Ben, do you think? I, do you prefer think solo? I, I do more solos than, than, than co collabs, and that's been, I think, a few reasons. I mean, partly just, it's just been, it's just easier sometimes, isn't it? If, it's, if you're just organising yourself, mm. you haven't got to wait for anyone else, and you just, you just go, don't you, I suppose? And then yeah. everything that's been happening in the world, you know, with the lockdowns and everything, I guess that's, yeah, that's clearly had an impact. Um, I, I, I like sharing the experience with people. It's nice to share the experience. It's nice sometimes mm. to have someone to talk to. But I think also there's something about having your own company and having your own thoughts and time yeah. just nothing. I particularly, yeah. I don't know, don't know about you, it's just some, maybe it's a London thing, a city thing, and something about the getting out but also getting out on your own you know you get in the car don't you you leave london and and you just suddenly you're 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 on your own and yeah and you don't have to make any effort and i, and yeah. I think that's really that's really attractive 
but I know that's not I, correct. I, I, I found filming with with my mates when I made that video was was so distracting. It was just it was quite hard to kind of you know put a camera in their faces and in my face in the same way as I don't know if you found that when you've done collabs, but if it's yeah, challenging. I guess if both of you are YouTubers, it might be a bit easier. But yeah. Um, okay, cats for brekkie again. Uh, what are your thoughts on those who are walking wild camping after watching videos, but being very unprepared and having to call out rescue services due to weather closing in? Um, I think it's a bit silly to not be prepared. I think you've got to do your homework. You've got to, you know, look at the weather forecast, look at the mountain forecast. And I think you have to be prepared for kind of all conditions, don't you? Really? I think it's, um, but you know, sometimes sometimes things things happen, and I, I remember when I did um, a couple of years ago, and I went to Bamford Edge with Hardy actually, and uh, we and the weather was coming in, and then we saw some tourists in just in trainers and cardigans and sort of light jackets, and I was just yeah. I, I genuinely was like just really concerned. There was me, all you know, everything looking like you know I'm off to the North Pole, um, and I just thought they're taking such a risk. But you do hear about it, don't you? People that are just you know, go up to the Kinder Scout or something, or in just yeah. crazy, crazy, crazy clothing and lack yeah. of and then wonder why there's a problem. And then, then, it, then it it must be annoying for the rescue services, I guess, you have to kind of deal with that quite often. That's the thing. That's that's the, you don't want to put the burden on other people, yeah. isn't it? And, and obviously you want to take care of yourself and people you're going with, but to put, you know, to be unprepared and sort of um, ignore that side of it and then have to rely on other people to come and, come out and yeah. get you a bit bit um but you'll soon learn that's the thing if you go up on your own and you've not got the right gear you'll, you'll quickly learn to I, I remember one guy who was a who was quite new to youtube and it was a really good video but he was wearing a, a brand new down jacket yeah and it just pissed it down <laughs> and you know down, you, you, down you're not really meant to get wet and it was like it, it, you know this jacket was worth a lot of money and it got soaking wet and i can't imagine it was any use after that yeah it's just funny to see it but um, um question from mark any tips on drying raincoats and trousers in your tent i don't know i've never really been that successful at doing that mark to be honest with you i tend to use the um you know the vestibule so in the tent that i've got the helm compact one there's two vestibules there's one at the back and one at the front um i don't know really i guess uh, the vestibules are in there's one there's one where the door is and there's the one at the front of the tent as well uh, so the one my tent there's one at there there's one at the front and there's one at, yeah. there's one at the back and okay. um i don't know i know some people sort of hang them up but i don't know where do you do that and i guess the water's just sort of dripping on you so i guess you just i i just try what i try and do is just get it away from the dry stuff so yeah. i kind of that's the main priority get it away from the dry stuff and then that's it really isn't it yeah i guess so try and try and flatten it out if you can if you can put it like i'm just my thought was if you had your backpack and you you had that in your vestibule you could maybe lay out your jacket on top of your backpack or something yeah I've done that. That, like the waterproof just so it's i guess if it's clumped together it's not going to dry as well but then some of the tents have the my fuel raven tent that's got like a line in it um but again you're gonna it's gonna drip on you isn't it but maybe if you had some damp stuff you could yeah you could string it out maybe so yeah i guess that's yeah one of those things that just happens i suppose um so so I'm just going back up, uh, Simon. Bear with me. Um, quite a few questions coming. Um, That's good. It's good to get some questions. Have some more. Have some more whiskey. Talk about yourself. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. One. Uh, do you both have an Israeli bandage in your pack? Israeli bandage. I don't know what an Israeli bandage is. Uh, we're about to find out. I think. Might need some more help on that, Louise. Sorry, that might sound bad. I don't, I'm not quite sure. Thank you. Um, oh, here's a good one. You'll like this one. From Johnny Boy 4766 Given perfect conditions, which would be your go-to shelter? A tent, tarp, or a bivy? Perfect conditions. Oh, I know what mine is. You're going to go for a tent, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> How did you guess? <laughs> because all of my videos are for intense. You're the king of tents, so <laughs> um, I think probably the same for me. I think actually, not just because Simon said it, but I don't. Why, know, do you know, why would you say that? Do you think it's the security of the tent? I think mm. it's sort of. You see, some people just don't some like. I hate that. Yeah. Yeah, some people don't like being cocooned. And they think yeah. 
if you're not going to see what's coming yeah you need to be exposed to the outside and why would you then zip yourself up in this weird cocoon mm. but then the others like that security the shell yeah so like the security of it yeah but it's, it's might it's probably you know my um should probably be a bit more open to trying more 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 of the other ones um mm. louise is saying cats for brekkie our wasdale rescue team are very busy with rescuing stupid people off the fells unprepared yeah. Yeah, can believe it. Um, Kaku, Kaku, definitely recommends first aid training. Had multiple courses, paid by work, only occasionally needed, but really helps knowing what to do. Witness most people. Witnessed most people are totally clueless around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is I guess it, it, do you think it's something you'd forget? With do you think it's a bit like a driving test? Isn't it? Is there a need to like renew it? Or do yeah, you think I mean. I mean, where I work, you know, we have to train people up in it, and they, and every three years it has to be renewed for that reason because mm. you forget things. So, You're a teacher, man, teacher. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Teaching the kids. <laughs> I'll never forget you. <laughs> um, Hardy, hi Hardy. Hi, hi Hardy. Hardy. Man, ten. The two, the two is not so strong. I think he's referring to the helms there, Simon. I've heard this before okay. that the, the, he's saying the helm too. I think it's the one that you had. Yeah. He doesn't think it's as strong as the one. I guess maybe okay. there's more, more space and chance of it moving around, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I want to check out the one. It, it sounds like a like a really good tent, to be honest. Hi, Jim Bob. Yeah. Hi, Jim Bob Outdoors. Welcome. Decathlon. Yep. Yeah. To have Decathlon kit is great value. I was in the, the Surrey Keys store recently and they um there's so much stuff in there they had a hunting section in there in decathlon like yeah hunt it all with all the kind of hunting attire <laughs> you're just catering for it like all the fishing stuff as well yeah tons it's of fishing stuff. yeah yeah i've been um, to the story geeks one it's huge isn't it? it is isn't it hello yeah. john uh great to see you thank you thank you for joining us um you're talking about your bunker the the um the bunk, your bunker video. Yeah. That everyone's seen. What, um, so, so what was that all about? Did you plan to go? I remember watching it in like a long time. Yeah, yeah. it's one of my first videos I did. And I, I um, it was up in, um, in Suffolk and I was intending on camping on the beach in the sort of sand dunes -y kind of area. And I'd been there before and I heard there was going to be some unsettled weather, but I wasn't, it, it wasn't forecast to be as bad as it, as it, as it was and um and just got caught out so i had to make a split decision go back to the car like like you did and yours or i knew there was this bunker on the on the path on the cliff path that i'd walked past and um i just made the decision just to go to go there and it was <laughs> and it was one of those moments where I, I just need to i need to get out because there's lightning strikes i can see them happening and they were getting nearer and nearer and i just i, I was more of a safety thing and I didn't really care what the bunker was like and that I was on my own and it was a bit smelly and dingy. I just did. I just wanted to get out of the, you know, away from the lightning. But some yeah. people thought I fabricated it. Some people thought it was staged and the whole thing yeah. was, yeah, yeah. Some people didn't thought I'd, uh, it's so weird. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't, it genuinely wasn't. So. And did you, did you sleep in there? Obviously you slept in there, but did you? Yeah, I did. didn't sleep very well, but I did. I, I, some people said, why didn't you put your tent up in it? It was not a freestanding tent. It just, it was one of those ones with the hoop. It was a Van Gogh one with just a single hoop over the middle. <laughs> so it just would have gone, eh, you know, <laughs> and there was a broken glass oh, in there and things. And I love the freestanding. No, no. So in the end I used, um, I think I used the, the tent footprint as a sort of a ground sheet. Yeah. And then I put my sleeping pad on the top of it, and then I then slept on the on the you know got my sleeping bag and slept in there, and there were yeah. drips coming through. But it, it was much better than being outside. Right, right. But, cats, yeah. cats for Brecky is saying the bunker was the video that got has got got me subscribed. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So those, those those popular ones are the ones. Yeah, that, that, that was the one suffering. everyone loved seeing me having a traumatic <laughs> time, and everyone you know, it's my most watched video I think still. So interestingly. And how many how many uh, views? I think it's had nearly nearly fifty thousand views now. That's incredible, isn't it? So, so yeah, okay. it's, it's it's that one and the review videos. So I think I don't know, I don't know about you, but the review videos get watched most more. The, 
the review videos get more viewers than the wild camps mm. i think mm. I think because lots of people come for answers, don't they? Like, what's this down jacket like, or what's this sleeping bag like? Yeah. Your video, or my yeah. video come up, comes up, and but that's nice, isn't it? I mean, it provides a an answer, and well, that's all. That, that's that. That's the basically the basis of you know Dan Becker. That is his channel, isn't it? It's all about reviewing gear, or used to be. I've, I've not yeah. watched a lot of it recently, but I know when he. I think when I started watching him, when I started camping, he was obviously a lot smaller, but clearly on like a. You know, taking off as a really good channel, and yeah, I remember him saying that people just love watching gear reviews and they get the most views because <laughs> people love hiking gear, don't they? There's so much of it. So, Jason said, Evening, Simon. Hope you like the email on Jason Horsewater. Yeah, thanks for that, man. I, I love the you sent me loads of pictures and stuff, didn't you? That was wicked. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, really good. Thanks, Jason, for, for supporting the channel as well. You, you, Jason messages a lot on my... Oh, OK, um, yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. Another decathlon fan there. Um, 47 Fred. I wild camped years ago near Folkestone, a place called Etching Hill. Little did I know it was an MOD training area. <laughs> and at two in the morning, a star shell burst over my tent and loads of army cadets charged past. <laughs> wow. Wow. That must have been frightening. <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant. Can you imagine yeah. that? It would be like that. You know, you know when you hear those noises and everything, you're like, "Is that? What is that? <laughs> it's actually, it's yeah. actually something to be worried about." Do you ever so, get that? You, you know, when you're sleeping, do you ever do you ever get freaked out by noises or anything? Yeah, totally. It's the, yeah. it's just the bizarre, isn't it? The what the brain does. Yeah, it's natural because you're sleeping outside at the end of the day. It's it's weird when you've, you're in this kind of environment yeah. you feel much safer but when you're in a tent in the and it can just sometimes it can just be a guy line on your tent that's not been pegged out and it's just brushing against the fly sheet and it's you know it sounds like someone's... it sounds like it's an animal or something yeah yeah and I, I i i had this thing once where it, i was asleep and in the middle of the night um there was this bright light shining through my tarp it was a tarp and bivy I, I did in leith hill in surrey and it's straight kind of went straight through and i was convinced it was a ranger because i've been told about rangers in the area and i i i i, I just shot i was apps just just jumped out of my skin and then all it was was a whatsapp notification on my phone that just came up no way. and it was right near my head like that <laughs> and so the bright lights just woke me up but you know it's stuff like that just made me his WhatsApp group. I, I I went I camped at Leith Hill as well. I think following one of your videos as well. Yeah. Um, and the middle of the night there was, or it was sort of getting towards midnight or something. Loads of people because you know they had that tower on the hill yeah. and uh, yeah, loads yeah. of people were doing that like a midnight walk and they all had like headlamps on and it was just yeah. it was bizarre. And I think I I think subsequent to that I'd read about the rangers and stuff, but I didn't have any issues. Well, um, that you know you know the camp that you did. Uh, after I told you where it was, yeah, given the yeah. location away, that one, yeah, that. that was awesome. And that the, when I did my video of that, there were some late night walkers just came up for a late night drink, and it was really? and they came up to the tent really? and they shone the torch through, and they really? whispered. <clears throat> and I remember getting really, I remember it's getting really annoyed. Like, what are they? Why are they out at this time of night? You know, it's me and my yeah. tent. Like, why are they out? Were you near the, 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 the peak of that hill then? Were you kind of? Were, Sorry, were you, were you sort of near? Were you sort of at the peak of that hill? Yeah, I was quite. Yeah, I was just off to the side, but mm -hmm. but yeah, I was near a, an area where people can sit down, but not mm -hmm. right there. So they had to go past my tent, and and That's on the right. on the helm one, the compact one, there are lots of uh, reflectors on on the guys mm -hmm. and on the on the seams of the yeah. tent, which I suppose is quite good if you need to find your tent, but not if you're trying to be stealthy. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always re impressed by those reflectors, though, and the guy line reflectors. Like when you yeah, were, yeah, and they're uh, pretty good. That's actually really helpful. But yeah, if you're trying to be we've got, got a, we've got an answer on the Israeli bandage. Go on. I'm learning stuff. It's, there, it's a multi-purpose trauma bandage for all injuries. Hopefully, you will not have to use it. Okay. Multi-purpose bandage. That sounds really helpful. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really useful. Um, right. I'm going to go back to the questions I had. Um, what's there some other ones? If anyone else has got any questions for Simon, ask ask away. Or, or like, welcome or, questions. Or anyone, or if you just want to just say something, just feel free to type it in. And I've got some. Yeah. Just, 
before. Um, I've got a question for you, Simon. Go on. Do you ever watch your own videos back? Oh, not really. The, the yes. only time I do is when I'm yeah. editing. Yes. And I... and go, it's Friday night. I want a Simon Outdoors night. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to do back to back. Watch you. No, watch. no I, just, <laughs> I, I find it cringe. It cringy. I don't like, yeah, I'm not, I don't particularly like the way I sound or. Really? Yeah, I, try. I think the, I think when I'm editing, I'll always watch it back just to make sure there's no mistakes or anything in the editing. Yeah. But, once I'm done, I'm like, I, I might watch the old thing or something, but yeah. I find it, I don't find it that easy. What about you? you... Yeah, I'm similar. I never, I never watch things. It's very rare for me to sit and watch something in its entirety again. Mm. But sometimes I, I might go back to remind myself how I did something, right? Like, like an edit or, or something I did camping wise or, yeah. Like, like there's there's one video where I did about how to put up a tarp tent, mm -hmm. and I sometimes I watch it to teach myself how to do it again, and it was the mm -hmm. video I made, so I'm just kind of watching myself teach myself, you know. <laughs> so, so, so sometimes I've, I've done that, or yeah, or sometimes I think right, okay, how did I do that last time? Okay, I want to I want to edit that differently. So it's more from a sort of trying to improve the content, yes, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, that's cool that you're kind of you know reminding yourself of how to do stuff yeah but, um, but then you're right but then sometimes you do look back at things and you just think oh that was awful yeah I can't, I can't believe i you know that's still there on the channel and some of it you know some of it will be good but like i, I feel like i, I want to watch more out of other people's videos because i want to get better at editing and get some yeah. ideas and stuff as well but i think sometimes that can almost shape the way you edit videos as well and sometimes it's quite nice to have your own way of doing things yeah um here's a question no, or a comment hang on let's do this up here camps and coffee i was on banford edge a couple of weeks ago and i thought i would chance it early hours i woke up and was convinced someone was shining a torch at my tent it was my watch lighting up the tent so, yeah it's like your WhatsApp. yeah it is it's like the whatsapp isn't it it's but it's yeah. crazy it's just that you, you your heart races and the most ridiculous sounds and yeah okay. so i I use um i mentioned on i think my second last video i, I use um earplugs i just find they're really the, the yeah. thing about those is you can't really hear anything when when you've got them in a lot of the time apart from yeah. a bit of wind so it's kind of like it's almost quite nice to hear stuff because then you can anticipate what it might be or like yeah. you know prepare for it but but yeah that's quite nice if you had a couple of beers it's quite nice just to put some some of those in because yeah you, if yeah. you're not great at sleeping it helps um Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, another question I've got is obviously we're quite different, different in height. So mm. I'm five foot eight. You're over six foot, I think, aren't you? How, how, how tall are you? Six five. Maybe. Six five. So have you got any tips for uh, the taller world camper in terms of, you know, where any tips or? Particular mm. gear or get get large. <laughs> get so large. like I found with backpacks <laughs> and stuff, but like I mean I've not really had a smaller backpack, but I find again the Jack Wolfskin tent that I've got at the moment, like two person tents are better. So the the the, the helm two was great for that kind of thing. But I was sort of lying, I guess, across it in a way. Um yeah. but the the wood the Jack Wolfskin Skyrocket tent that I've got again is like amazing, amazing on length. So if you're, I mean, if you're just going for like a one nighter, then a two person tent, if you're taller, is going to be a bit more useful and, and not necessarily more expensive. Like the Lanchan 2 is is the one, isn't it, that everyone seems to have. And I think I understand that's pretty spacious inside. Yeah. Um, so two person tents aren't necessarily, you know, a huge amount more. Um, so if you are taller, get a good sized tent, I'd say. Um, I, I went I went with the extra large um, sleeping pad, the Thermarest one, which... Yeah. Uh, to be honest, you could probably get away with not doing that. To be honest, it's not; it doesn't. It's still not long enough. I find. I find. Yeah. Um, and I've not had a. I've not had a medium sized one, so I can't. I, I, although I did have a Berghaus one, which it, I didn't have issues. I guess I'm not sort of a. I tend to scrunch up a bit when I sleep mm. anyway. So, but I think ten. I'd say ten size because it's going to be especially if you've got a down sleeping pad, a sleeping uh, bag rather, because that's just going to get soaked on the condensation on the edges of your tent and stuff. If you're yeah, a bit taller, that's. I find that quite 
that can happen quite a lot if your tent's not long enough. Thank you, mate. Um, Cats of Brecky, any tales of waking up in the morning, looking out the tent and thinking, oh dear, oops, didn't expect that. Um, so I had one going back to the Leith Hill when I, when I slept on Leith Hill in the bivy and I woke up in fog. Right. I wasn't expecting it. I didn't even see it on the forecast. And then I, and I was on this high hill and I opened and I was just surrounded by this fog and it was just really weird. Yeah. So I don't know if you had any. Yeah, I've, I've had a lot of those. You know, when you get, the, you get the really nice weather the evening before and then the very next morning, it's just like the Peak District one I did, uh, my second to last video, I think. Yeah. Was a really foggy kind of damp, and I'd, I'd seen the, the the forecast was rain, but yeah, the the mist came in as well. I've had a few of those actually. Again, on the South Downs, I had one of those. Woke up and it was completely completely misty. It happens quite a lot actually. Yeah. So this one you might be able to answer because I think you've got more expensive tents than me. It says, "Do you do you know why?" It's so from Mark. Why do you, do you know why some of the most expensive tents are not fire retardant? I'm surprised by that. I thought they'd be more. I thought I thought they'd have materials that are more, um, you know, better at proofing against fire. But I, maybe it's that I don't. I don't know the answer. But maybe if I was to guess, I'd say um, perhaps in an effort to make the materials lighter or yeah, quality strength wise, they might be a bit less. Someone might know in the chat. So someone who's watching at the moment might have some thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. um, and then Jim. Bob is saying hills, beach, or woodland. Mm. Actually, Mark, just going back to Mark's question, do you, have you got any examples of brands of tent that you don't think are that fire? fire yes, yeah, so and Mark, if you're if, yeah, if you're thinking of a particular tent brand, pop it in the comments, and we'll yeah come back to that. Good to know. Um, yes, yeah, Jim, Jim, Jim Bob is saying hills, beach, or woodland. I don't know. I don't know really. I'd, I'd say hills, I think, just because I just like a view. I love a view. Yeah. I'm just scared about falling branches. I, I've not I've not really tried a beach. I know you've had a few beach ones, haven't you? I've had a couple really? of beach ones. I do get a bit nervous about high tides, even that even when I've done the homework, I always worry I've got it wrong. So mm. but I love a woodland as well. There's something about the woods, isn't there? What do you like about the woods? The escape you kind of like you just go you, you just you just immediately away and you're mm -hmm. kind of enveloped in nature and the sounds yeah. and smells and yeah and That's the, the, wake, yeah. waking up the next day is quite nice and it's really that nice makes sense. i guess at the top of a hill you don't get that immersive unless i mean you get good views sometimes you get the view but... don't you yeah yeah you get the wind as well <laughs> yeah maybe not always but um yeah uh a tall, oh hang on mark saying hillyberg no he you know you were asking about the brands so he's saying hillyberg hillyberg yeah that's interesting isn't it i thought they'd be all over that kind of thing yeah i don't know enough about it to be honest mm -hmm. um and then louise is saying i'm nearly six foot and yes yeah, so i always get large tall stuff I know with decathlon, you, you always have to get the neck. I, in my experience, you have to get the neck size up. So Definitely. I, yeah. I, I tend to get yeah. medium in everything. No, well, no, no, sorry, I tell you why. I'm I generally in non-decathlon stuff, I'm a medium. Mm. If I buy decathlon, I have to get a large. Yeah, I'm I'm XL on their on their down jacket. Yeah. The same. Someone did explain it to me once because they design it that it's not designed for British people or something, or it's just they design it for it's a French company, isn't it? I don't Is know. It French? Okay. Yeah, it's yeah, you're right. You're right. Because I, yeah. yeah, I tried to join their um, affiliate program. Yeah, it just wasn't. A couple of my videos are on Decathlon products and my most popular ones, and so I tried to join their affiliate program, and I got a lot of French emails, and I didn't quite get it up and running. But okay, yeah. yeah. Um, right. Just maybe we can get a couple more questions. I think thing, things are slowing down a little bit here, but we've got quite a lot of people on. We've got nearly 30 on at the moment. Go on. Nearly 30. The power of the duo. And we said we were aiming for more than 20, and we've done that for most of the last hour, Simon. So That's pretty decent, isn't it? Not bad. Yeah. Bad. Um, Thanks, everyone. It's awesome. Oh, here we are. 
this is one of my questions. <laughs> okay, delving into my, I've got. I'm going to ask this to anyone, say Simon or anyone in the chat. Trekking pouches or real food, and why? Ah, oh, that's a great question. Trekking pouches or real food? That is a great question. I am. Um, I'm trying to use less trekking pouches. I'm trying to just be a bit more inventive, and you know, they're not cheap, are they? I mean, if you the cost of one is what five or six quid, but then when you start buying them all the time, but like gas, it's, yeah, it's not. I don't, I don't. I don't like washing up, so there is that advantage, isn't there? Yeah. There is just, you know, but yeah, I don't like eating a load of crap because I do put a lot of that anyway, and so sometimes with the actually with that like the summit to eat meals, I find they do actually have like bit onions and carrots and stuff in. Yeah, so but they're not bad. I, I they're not too bad. The summit to eat ones actually. I quite I quite like them. Mm. Um, the tea I'm, I'm having if, when I do get them, I tend to have um, the dehydrated ones more than the wet meals now. Right. I, just, I, I find you get more once it's hydrated. You actually get a fuller meal, and yeah, it's often the taste is a bit better. I find. Have you had the real tour map? Yeah. Tour map. Have you had one? Have you had? I think you had one yeah. in your video. Yeah, I did. Uh, I tried the reindeer one. Mm. Eleven ninety nine. It cost me. <laughs> just. Yeah, tried not to drop it, um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't. I don't it was all right. I, was it worth eleven ninety nine? I don't think so. Really, I don't think so. No, if I'm honest. Hardy it's swears by them, like doesn't he? I think I heard someone say he said there. It was like the closest you can get to kind of like a cooked meal at home or like a. But yeah. you, did, did, did you did it taste nice? Do you think was it was it was it the nicest one you've had? It was okay. I mean, I hadn't had reindeer before, so I hadn't. I've not had a chance to compare reindeer. You know. <laughs> It's my first first reindeer. Yeah. Not surprising. So yeah, I don't know. So some people in the chat here are saying, um so Jim Bob is saying rat packs for feet for longer walks, real food for woodland camps. Louise is oh, that's yeah, that sounds 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 about right, doesn't it? Yeah. I guess when you've got more time, I, I agree with that, Jim. If you know you haven't got to go and you've got a bit of time and space, you're not you're not worried about moving moves on, then you can. And I sometimes think I, I sort of associate like woodlands with with actual real fire, and then there's a bit more scope for probably cooking. Yeah, different things instead of just. Someone said, someone's, uh, so Louise is saying they play havoc with her tummy. Okay. Um, real food, cats for brekkie. Real food. Let's see if I can display this one. Sorry. Um, Real food, you can start with one idea to cook food, morph it into another idea per weather circumstances, but it's more to carry. I am, um, I'm also, the other thing, and I'm thinking of doing a video on this actually, is tins. Now, some people, obviously this is not gonna be for ultra light people, but there's, a, there's some good stuff in tins that um, I think is just as good, if not better than a trekking pouch and, and probably a quarter of the price. So things like stag chili, Stuff like that, oh, so okay. they're, you know, and pouches yeah. of pre-cooked rice, you know, like Uncle. Yeah, Frank. those those would be awesome. All those, yeah. There's stuff out there, and tins, yeah. food. and obviously, you know, you wouldn't put, you wouldn't fill up your backpack with with you know a thousand tins, but the odd, you know, maybe one tin. Mm. I don't know, you know, some of us take beers with us, so what's a tin? It's going to make much difference. Well, yeah, it? yeah, I think for the kind of stuff most people do, a lot of us are doing one or two nights at the most, isn't it? So that's fine to carry. Have you seen English Woodsman has a channel on? Um, just entirely on food yeah 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 it's just pouches isn't it yeah yeah um peter donovan saying british rations are my favorite easy to get down at the end of the day plenty of calories i suppose yeah there is that argument isn't there that if you're mm. if you're doing a multi-day hike or you're doing it yeah doing a long walk you just need the calories and you want it quick and you don't want to faff about yeah totally agree totally agree that, that i think yeah. it's definitely a place can you see uh, the spam in the chat ben that means we're real YouTubers because we've got a spammer just sending the same message over and over again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I won't give him any airplay. <laughs> um, we need a moderator just to like delete those. Let me just put up, uh, right, bear with me a second and then we'll, right, let's find someone who's a bit more interesting. <laughs> uh, Oh yeah, someone's saying about eleven ninety nine. I was robbed. No, they they are a tenner though. They, that's how much. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Like the uh, Chris Barber, 
full English breakfast made and freeze oh, them okay. to take it. Yeah, I have heard it at some people that do their own, they do their own stuff. Yeah. You know? Um, that sounds good though. So Patrick Dickinson, those of you that like Patrick Dickinson's channel, he does a lot of that. He I makes his own time. food and he, what's the, What's the opposite of you know, from, he de, what's the opposite of rehydrating it? So he he freeze yeah he he de yeah dehydrates it yeah. Um, so he does his own stuff on that and obviously saves quite a bit of money on that mm -hmm. one. So that's yeah that's definitely something. Um, yeah, someone's saying about being spammed. Right. Uh, Okay, hold on a second, guys. Right. We'll give it a little bit more time and then we'll bring things to a close, Simon. Um, when's, when's your next trip, Ben? What, are you, what have, you, have you got any plans for like? Yeah, so I've got a, I've got a plan. If, if I can get petrol, I've got a plan at the weekend um, if I can get petrol because I don't have much petrol in my car at the moment. So mm. we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if the same around you are all the stations just queues everywhere yeah 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 it's crazy and it's just um i'm looking to use my new polish lavu tent not sure if you how you say it. it's lavu or lavu i don't know but okay. anyway I've got one of those one of those tents and yeah. um the plan is to try and use it uh, in a location this weekend if mm -hmm. i can get there and there's rain forecast so it could be quite interesting it could be it could turn into a bad weather camp video yeah, I think we'll get a few of those now that we're getting into that season, isn't it? I've seen yeah. the rain coming. Yeah, this week, but yeah. Um, so, right, just ignore the spammer, everyone. Can, can we can we block it? Can you do anything to block it's, it? Um, yeah, yeah, I am blocking it, but for some reason, ah, they're, nice just, one. they're just coming back. You might see it's... it coming up as blocked, but for some reason, they're popping back up. Okay. Yeah, like that. Uh, we'll just we can just continue with that. Yeah um so yeah so the the thing that's been in the news is about dartmoor i don't know if you spotted it simon there's so basically because of the fly campers or the dirty campers um and people sort of misusing areas of dartmoor they're talking about um uh reducing restricting the areas that people can wild camp on dartmoor okay. so I, don't know, I don't know whether anyone in the chat has um has heard about that but sorry, oh. I just deal with this user for a moment. Sorry. Um, I think that would be a shame if if they had to do that kind of thing. Yeah, um, I've heard I've heard some reports in Scotland as well of like with the whole more people using the mountains and stuff of it of them considering different different yeah. limitations and stuff. I think that would be a shame. Yeah, I guess you have to do something right with if this stuff gets out of control. Yeah. So bear with me. There's quite a lot of spam coming through, as people can see. So I'm sorry, everyone, about that. Not that I have much control over it. But, um, so are you deleting those? Um, I'm doing something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fair um, enough. It's not really. So I think we might. Yeah. So basically, yeah. So they're just they're talking about just reducing the the number of places that people can can wild camp, which is a good. But they were saying it was in the Guardian. Um, oh, yeah. garden website but they were saying how it's just problem it's it's not really fair on that you kind of understand why they're doing it with all the kind of lockdown camping and everything but it's a shame on the people that are respectful to the land yeah so, so they're going ahead and doing that are they restricting parts i don't know i think it, i don't know if it's off sort of consultation or something so mm. they're talking they're talking about it um right do you know what i think it might be the, the right time to bring things to a close yeah let's do it man I'll just, I'll just check the clock and i don't want to give these particular people any more airtime you are infiltrating so simon thanks ever so much for coming on it's been good to have right. you here mate. it's been awesome thanks for inviting me i re really appreciate it ben yeah. thanks for getting it working we, we, we got it to work amazing yeah. you know we got the technology to work so uh We'll have to we'll have to do it again, or or maybe even do a camp at some point. Yeah, we need to do that. We need to get that sorted. Get That'll that. be the next. Definitely. But do um, I'm going to do the old do like, hit the like on Ben's video and this stream. <laughs> yeah, and if you yeah do check out 
yeah, do check out Simon's channel as well. And his recent video is really, really good. Um, uh, on the way to Helvellyn, wasn't it? And yeah, Helvellyn, yeah. Part two came out today. Part two yes. of it as well. Yeah. So yeah, do do check it out. Do check it out. Um, and yeah, hit the like. I don't. I think this is. Hopefully, this will save. So um, if you want to share it, or people have, you know have missed it, it should, okay. it should it should save. I think automatically. So yeah, it should be there to watch afterwards. All right. Awesome. Thanks everyone for joining. And thank you. Thank you. Thanks it's everyone. Really good. Take care. I'm going to Take try. Care, and the next, the next challenge is to try and end it without in, without it all going. Uh, it's going to be the easiest bit, surely. Yeah. There's a button that says end broadcast, so we'll just press that. <laughs> right. Cheers. <laughs>